and welcome back to the way of truth through Torah and we are back here this evening to study Revelation and this is a revelation of who? John? No, yes, yes, Yahusha, <laughs> Yeshua, Yahusha, it is his revelation but it's being told through who? John. So John wrote it, John did write it. Oops, I got my hair sticking out. That's going to drive Valerie wild. She'll come yeah. over here and slap me. Not like Bonnie did with floss water, but <laughs> she will slap me. Okay, guys. We're, I'm, I'm, last week, we went through the seven churches and the church ages. What church age are we in right now? That wonderful layout. Did they see a church age, right? And I want to read what this church is just to start us back out, Okay. I am in uh, chapter 3 of Revelation, and for those of you who, can I borrow your Bible? Yes, ma'am. And put your finger in your place. Sorry, right, I'll keep it. Uh, for those of you joining us, maybe for the first time, we are in the, yeah, ah, <laughs> we're in the scriptures, <laughs> Bonnie. Okay, we're in the scriptures Bible. It is a very, let me tell you what I like about the scriptures. It's replaced the name of Yahweh. It's replaced the name of Yahusha. It has put their name in. It's in the, the Hebrew script, so they're not telling you how to say it. They're not giving you hints, excuse me, at how to pronounce it. But they have replaced their names in here. Plus, it has replaced instructions and the law with what it is actually called, the Torah, which the Torah is our instructions for living a perfect life. But I love the Scriptures Bible. It has given the names back for all of the prophets, and um, so if you would like one, part of our ministry is handing these out. So give us a message on Messenger, and we will get you your very own Scriptures Bible. And you can go with us through Revelation. There. So we are starting in four today, but we're backtracking just a little bit to see where we ended off last week. Because the church age that we're in right now is the church of Laodicea. And I want you to hear about this church. Because... When you hear of it, you're going to know this is exactly, it's exactly what we see about in our congregations. <clears throat> and to the, and I'm in 14 of 3, and to the messenger of the assembly in Laodicea write, the amen and trustworthy and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim says this. And I want to tell you, this church age lasts from 1950 through now, and it will last until the end, Okay. I know your works, that you are neither hot or cold. So the works are nothing. They're good for nothing. This church is good for nothing except entertainment, right? I would that you were hot or cold. I wish you were either dead or zealous. And we just got through studying about the zealousness that's needed in our church today. The churches today are neither. They're, they're, they're neither hot nor cold. They're just... They're, they're there, they think they're doing great things, and they tell jokes, and they tell stories, and, you know, I, don't, I can't tell a joke. I'd have to get Val up here to tell the joke. Why, wait, she just told me one. Why, why have aliens never visited Earth? Because they checked our ratings. We only got one star. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are the You're kind the best for it? I don't even get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you see why you see why I don't tell jokes and now I'm gonna have to check my ratings because <laughs> well, okay. people from Africa, Bangladesh Dash and Mr. Steve Bullard was on earlier. Yes, we've got Bangladesh, Uganda <coughs> Uganda. Um we've got um, Steve Bullard. He was on there earlier. Pakistan. Yep. Okay, verse 16. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. This is, this is how extremely unhappy Yah is with this church today. He wants to just vomit us out of, out of his mouth because good for nothing. Self-entertainment. Listen, they're rich. They've got loads of money because they've got those 5013 cs set up. They don't have to pay taxes on any of the money that comes in. They're just fat sassy driving their big planes around he says because you say 
Rich I am, and I am made rich, and need none at all, and do not know that you are wretched, and pitiable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I sad, didn't it? Yeah. They don't even know it. They're like, what was it, the prince without clothes? What was that? The emperor and his new clothes. The emperor and his new clothes, which were, what, nothing? Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't even know it. He didn't know he was naked. That's the way the church is today. They have fooled themselves into believing that they are something special. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you become rich and white garments so that you become dressed so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. They can't even see that they're naked, they're blind, they're, let's see, they're wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. They're all these things, and they can't even see it. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. So what is he saying there? You're not totally unredeemable. I can still, I can, I can still do something with you, but you're going to have to what? Be ardent. Get some zeal. Get some life back into your step. And repent. Get up. Move about. Get some works going. See, I stand at the door knocking. and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. And now we start the Revelation portion that we're actually going into. And after this, I looked and I saw a door having been opened in the heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I shall show you what has to take place after this. Okay, so we just saw I stand at the door and knock. Now we see that the door to heaven is open, right? Do what, Teddy? Oh, 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 sorry. You're excused. <laughs> sorry. I didn't know that's what you were saying. Um, so look at Matthew 10, 2510, sorry. I'm going to hand out some scripture verses here. So Val, you're going to do Matthew 2510. Um, Valerie, you're going to do Revelation 3, 8. Dennis, you're going to do Revelation 1, 10. Josie, you're going to do Revelation, I mean, Psalms 24, 1, one through 8. Okay. Okay, go ahead with yours, Val. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Keep going, or... Let me look at that real quick. Just a second. And you're in Matthew 24. 24. 25. Oh. 10. And I can't even find my 25 because I've written too much in my Bible. <laughs> there it is. Underneath all that scribble. And while they go back up, go back up to 5. Start there. Now, when the bridegroom took time, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, See, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, indeed, there would not be enough for us and you. Instead, go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Okay, there's the shut door, but it was open. Okay, so he's looking at an open door. We're looking at doors right now. These bridegrooms, this, these bridesmaids that were waiting, the virgins that were waiting for their, their groom to come, do y'all know how the Hebrew weddings worked? There wasn't really a wedding date set. I mean, it's not like you were like... In two days, I'm they getting married. The house and we came for them. He went and prepared it, and then he showed up. 
yes. without her knowing that he's coming. So she always had to be in mm -hmm. wait. Listen, guys, we need to be like that today. Our bridegroom is coming. We need to be ready and we need to be waiting. We don't need to wait till we see him in the sky, like Valerie was talking earlier, and then go, oh, I gotta be obedient. So what do you, okay, so they, they wanted some oil, right? Is that what they're wanting? Mm -hmm. Reliance, yes. Okay, what, what is the oil? And we talked about this in, in um, study this morning. It's the Torah. It is the Torah. Go and buy some for yourselves. Go find someone, go find you a Torah teacher to teach you to be obedient. Listen, you're not going through that door without Torah. You're not getting through it. He is the one who will escort you in. He is the bridegroom which is all well and great, but he is not going to know you and he's not going to let you in the door unless you have your obedience, your own righteousness, right? Because he says here, truly I say to you, I do not know you. He's talking to the bride. I don't know you. Watch therefore, you do not know the day nor the hour in which the son of Adam is coming for. He's like a man going from home who called his own servants and delivered his possessions to him. Guys, <clears throat> we have got to be prepared, but it is the Torah. That is our oil. That's the oil for our lamp. That is it. And Valerie, what did you say it was earlier? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The, the, the Spirit is a teacher, but he would teach us the Torah. Well, what, what gives us the light inside of us? I mean, Spirit is what teaches. I don't know. I have to look that up. Um, a lot of the teachers that I'm, I'm listening to, they're saying it's the Torah. Uh, it could be your obedience. To be obedient, you've got to have the Spirit. Yeah. And um, the Spirit's going to bring Torah. Oh, the Spirit's. He's a teacher. Yeah. He's a teacher. Just, yeah. It goes he hand said, in hand. He's the one you would go to to buy. I did hear something about the, the lamp, but I can't remember that too long ago. <laughs> okay, uh, we have for I think it's you, Valerie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Revelation three. Revelation three eight. Mm -hmm. I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one is able to shut it. That you have little power, and have guarded my word, and have not denied my name. And this is uh, Sardis. It is Sardis, and they, are they not the ones that, that went out and opened mission fields? And I mean, no one could shut that door. The, the mission work that they started, no one could shut it. So, but this is a door that is open. Okay, Dennis. Well, that's Philadelphia, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is Philadelphia. I'm... No more cake for me, guys. No more. <laughs> Revelation 110. <laughs> when I came to be in the spirit, on the day of Yahweh, heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Oh, and that's for the trumpet. Yeah. Good, good, good one. I'm going to get you to read it again in just a bit. Okay, Josie. The earth belongs to Yahweh and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas, and upon the waters he does establish it. Who does go up into the mountain of Yahweh? And who does stand in his set apart place? He who has innocent hands and a clean heart, who did not bring his lost to all, and did not swear to the He received a blessing from Yahweh, and righteousness from the Elohim of his deliverance. This is the generation of those who seek him, Yahweh, who seek your face, Shalom. Lift up your hands, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and let the sovereign of esteem come in. Who is the sovereign of esteem? Yahweh, strong and mighty. Yahweh, mighty in battle. Okay, who's who's going to be be able to enter those gates? What did you just read? The strong <coughs> and it's going to be the ones that have the righteousness of Elohim. The righteous, guys. What brings about righteousness, Dennis? Torah. Torah. Guarding the commands. Ch it's Deuteronomy six twenty five. Those who are doing His commands and guarding. Guarding and doing his commands. That brings us righteousness. That is the way you're going to get through those gates. Okay, I'm going to read um, 723 of Matthew. 
And I'm going to start in 721. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. Guys, how do Christians get past this verse? I'm really serious. Tell me. Tell me, tell me. How do they get past this verse? Cherry pick. They, they cherry pick? So, Master, Master, what does he say? That everyone who, who uh, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desires of my Father. So, live streamers, you've got to be actively pursuing, act actively doing what Yah has set before you. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. That would be horrible. That's what nobody wants to hear. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. So those who are lawless are what? Torahless. Torahless. Because the Torah is the law. Look at John 1, 3. <sighs> Excuse me. All came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. Um, everyone was created through him. Everything was created through him. Go to 1 John 12. There's not a 1 John 12. 1 John 1, 2. How do we know that we're in him? How do you know that you're his? How do you know we that guard you're his commands? You guard his commands. By this, this is what John's saying. By this we know that we know him if we guard his commands. The one who says, I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Listen, if they haven't read the front of the book, they don't know to guard the commands. They may think they know him, but they he's don't not. Know what truth is. They don't know what truth is because he is true. The Torah is true. He Psalm is the Torah. 119, 142 says his Torah is true. Okay, thank you, because I was going to get you to pull that one out. So his Torah is truth. And what does also John say? Yahushua is true. Yeah. I'm, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And so, you have to study to get that loop. Yes. You have to study it. You can't just read one verse and then expect it. It, it all flows together, and I think that's where some of the misconception has come from, just not taking the whole smudging of it together. Yes. Making sense of it. Well, and we can do that with any verse, guys. We can, make, we can make the words say anything we want if we don't read it in context. That's right. Just like they did with Acts and Peter, mm -hmm. with the sheet coming down. It didn't have anything to do with food. Even with the, uh, what do they call that thing? The rapture? The rapture? Yep. I still can't find what, where they cherry picked that one. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've yeah. looked and looked and looked. They said you'll be snatched out. Yeah, but you'll be plucked out. But, but it it's says, not rapture. It says in there, it, says, it doesn't say anything about rapture. It says that the people that are dead in the side will be lifted up first. The woman had a dream about it, and that's where that came mm -hmm. from. Yeah, it, she was sick. Mm -hmm. and running high fever and she had a dream a vision and so somehow that became uh -huh. the doctrine of the rapture yes. rapture is never found in scripture the plucking out that we do see is the plucking of the bad yeah, see, it says you'll have one in the field two in the field and one will be taken and the other one will still be there yeah okay well, where's heaven coming to what well, seth is talking about is when, when we go to meet him in the sky yes the, the, the dead, the dead right. are first, and they're not plucked; they're risen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, really, it's it's more of a they're resurrected and they rise up to meet him in the sky, and it is the dead first. Um, okay, so whoever guards his word, I'm I'm still in First John one, two, five. You got really confused on there. One. <laughs> But whoever guards his word, truly the love of Elohim has been perfected in him. And by this we know that we are in him. The one who says he stays in him ought himself also walk. Walk even as he walked. Guys, if you're not walking as Yahushua walked, you're walk not walking out the commandments. Okay? And let's see here. So, so back over to here. 
to um, Matthew 23. And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you who work lawless. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain came down, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. It was built. Listen, if you're walking out Torah, your foundation that you're walking on is firm. If you're not, you're walking on sink sand. I was kind of waiting for Val to come out. So Val, <laughs> without Torah, and if you build a house and you don't have Torah, what are you building on? Sand. Sinking sand. And so there's no foundation. It's going to be washed away. It's going to be washed away. If the winds come, if the rains come, that foundation is not going to stand. It's just going to wash. So um, all of these things we have to be doing, guys, to get through this door, the door that John sees that's open, and he's able to go through it. Okay, and he hears a trumpet speaking, and <laughs> Dennis read uh, Revelation 1, 10 while ago about what the trumpet is, and I'll read it again because he already read it once. I came to be in the spirit on the day of Yahweh. What is the day of Yahweh? We went through this last week. Judgment. It's the day of judgment. It's the day of wrath. It's the day of wrath. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. So it's a voice. So the trumpet is a voice, but it's going to be a loud, booming voice. Isaiah 27, 12 through 13. Dennis, would you read that? And Chanel, do you want to read? I read really fast, so you know. Do you? I tell you what, well, you're pulling it out. Seth, you want to, you want to read Matthew 24, 31? Sure. Okay. <coughs> Who did I give Isaiah to? Huh? That old man over there. Oh. 27, 12. 27, 12. 12. And in that day it shall be that Yahweh threshes from the channel of the river to the wadi of Mitzrayim, and you shall be gathered one by one, O children of Israel. And in that day it shall be that a great shofar, shofar is blown. That's going to be like the sound of a loud trumpet. Yes. Uh, and, and it's the day that the shofars are blown. And when is that? Yom Teruah. Yom the announcing of the king. And those who were perishing in the land of Asher, and the outcast in the land of Mitzrayim shall come, and all shall, and shall worship Yahweh on the set of parts now in Jerusalem. I'm ready for that. Okay, Matthew 24, 31. He shall send his messengers with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his chosen ones from the four winds, from one end of the, of the heavens to the other. And that's what we sing about today, guys. The song Zion, he's that is his promise. That is his covenant with us. He's coming back for us. He's going to gather us from the four corners, corners, corners of the world. Okay? He's going to bring us back, and he's taking us where? Home. To his mountain. To reside with him. Yes. And immediately, I'm in um, 4 2, and immediately I came to be in the Spirit, and I saw a throne set in the heaven, mm -hmm. and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a ruby stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. <coughs> you know, guys, the rainbow has been hijacked by the enemy, hadn't it? Yeah. Who, whose rainbow is this? So this was written 2,000 years ago, and this was a rainbow, and it is Yahweh's rainbow. Um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 1, 26 and 28. Chanel, you want to read that? And you're going to read it really fast. So let me really quickly turn this around. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you. Mm -hmm. oh, come on. <laughs> 530. Uh, 528. Which one? 26. 126. 126. And then you're also going to, to read um, 28. 
and above the expanse over their heads was like, was the likeness of a throne, and appearance was a sapphire, an appearance like a sapphire stone, and on the likeness of the throne was like a likeness of, as the appearance of a man high above it. And twenty eight, mm -hmm. as the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the esteem of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice <coughs> speaking. You know, guys, these people are, John and Ezekiel, they're trying their best to describe what they're seeing. Okay, and we have to remember that. They, they weren't, they've never been to our <coughs> age and time, and we're going to see that as uh, Josie was talking to us about the helicopters and the locusts. Um, that's going to be a pretty interesting study there. Okay, and... Are we eating candy? <laughs> I'm getting choked up. I'm getting choked up watching them. Um, and around the throne were 20. I'm skipping a bunch of verses, guys, because we have been here a long time today. And around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting dressed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. Who do you think these 24 are? I've heard lots of people that have made... Anybody? The 24 elders? Uh-huh. I think there's probably 12 people in the Old Testament and then the 12 disciples. I mean, there's Moshe, Elijah, Elisha, um, the, the prophets from the Old Testament, and then the 12 apostles or disciples from the New Testament. That's well, and, and I would say... I, I'm going to feel like it's got something to do with the tribes. The tribes are Yaakov's sons? So I've heard it was Yaakov's sons and disciples. the disciples combined. Uh, this is a verse that actually Parable of the Vineyard um, <coughs> came up with, and it's uh, in Second Ezra 1. And it's 35 through 40, and I'm going to read this to you, and, and you know, we can use it or not, because we really don't know who these are. I and mean, that was my opinion. Yes, right. and, and, and I've heard that opinion by many people, and that was my opinion as well. What was that verse? I'm so sorry. It's uh, 1 Ezra 1, 35 through 40. It says, Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe me. Wow. Hmm. I wonder who that is. To whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do the things I command them. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. They I, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in the ruach they believe the thing that I say. And now, brother, behold what glory, and see the people that come from the east unto whom I will give for leaders. Here are the leaders. Are you ready? <coughs> we have Abraham. He was righteous. Yishak, Yaakov, Husha, Amok, Makiyahu, Yoel, which would be Joel, Obadiyahu, Jonah, Nakum, Hab Habakkuk, uh, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Haggai, Zechariah, Zephaniah, uh, and Malachi, which is also called uh, an angel of Yahweh. So, that's th 12. that is not 12, that's 15. So, these are called leaders that are supposedly over everything, but th they are not living at the same time. Abraham and the prophets didn't live at the same time. Neither did um, Isaac. So um, that is another take or another possibility. You know what, guys? We're going to all be surprised when we get there with, with what we find. It's, it's just going to probably not going to be anything like that. And I think the crazy thing is, is I think when we get there, all the things that didn't make sense are going to be so simple. And it's just going to be like this great big, wow, aha moment. You know? For all of us. And some people are willing to argue and fight over over things that they think we're going to have. 
And there's nothing worth arguing and fighting ever. Titus. There's no point in um, yes. the mindless pearls, mindless pearls and that we're not supposed to argue amongst ourselves about things. No, we're not. We're not supposed to argue with those who, and, and I, with, with people who are supposed to be learned in the word, I will argue. Because they, shame on them. Shame on a preacher for preaching a lie that they learned in seminary. seminary. Catholics. Seminary. That is not Catholic. <laughs> but they followed the Catholics. They sure did. So in a sense, in a sense, yeah, they're just following the old Catholic Catholic order. Why not? Right? And out of the throne came lightnings and thunders and voices, and seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim, which we see that in another place in Revelation. So this almost sounds like what? It sounds like it sounds like Mount Sinai to me, where there's thunders and lightnings and and yacht in the menorah. Yeah, the seven lamps of fire would be like the menorah for sure. And before the throne there was a sea of glass. There's the looking glass. <laughs> Light crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. These creatures, guys, are going to be seraph, and we're going to we're going to look at them just briefly. But this sea of glass, it's mentioned one other time in Revelation, and uh, let's see, is it ten that it's mentioned in? Let me just look. I'm I'm not going to waste time on this. <coughs> I think it's over here in 10, but I'm not seeing it right off the bat. But this looking glass, there's two mentions of it. This sea of glass that's in front. And, and literally, when they built the tabernacle, there was the uh, brazen, uh, sitting on the bowls, the brazen bowl that they washed their hands in and washed the bodies in. That is very much like this because it's this little sea of glass right Valerie, did you find it 15 2 it says 15 2 that's it yes 15 2 through 3 i have it written here oh, wait. i know i can't ever find it, next, it. this next week i'm gonna sleep uh and okay. i saw a I, I saw like a sea of glass mixed with fire and those overcoming the beast in his image and his mark and the number of his name standing on the sea of glass holding harps of Elohim and they sing the song of Moshe. So this is another look at the sea of glass. But that sea, <clears throat> if y'all is sitting right there in front of it, what is he looking down through? That big thick glass right there, he can just look down and go, oh, look at all my kids. Look at all those lights shining down there. There, I know what's going on there. They're studying me. They're studying my Torah. Mm -hmm. They're talking about me. And so that to me is beautiful. Isaiah 6, 1 through 4. See, y'all are going to be so, so good at finding things in your mm -hmm. scriptures. <coughs> Everybody is doing that. <laughs> Okay, 6, 1 through 4. In the year that sovereign Yahu died, I saw Yahweh sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the heckle. And wow. the heckle is the temple. I know, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, with which he covered his face. With two he covered his feet, and two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Set apart, set apart, set apart. They were saying, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh is Yahweh of hosts. All the earth is filled with his esteem. Yeah, it, they, everybody falls on their face when this happens. So um, we're seeing that these are the living creatures that are surrounding his throne constantly. And the first living creature, and I'm back in Revelation uh, 4, 7, the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had the face of a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. 
So, um, there's lots of guesses um, what these faces are about. Anybody want to come up with something? So, some people are saying you've got the domesticated animal, you've got the wild animal, you've got humanity, but and then you've got the birds. But where are the fish? I mean, if, if you're going that route, there's no fish. So, I'm, I'm inclined to say, no, he's not going to leave <laughs> one group out, right? I don't, I don't know. This is just a little idea to throw out there. The lion, Yahusha is the lion of Judah, mm -hmm. whatever they call him. Um, a calf, which is a, a symbol of, that's where we get milk from, you know, our substance to feed us. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got the man. He came to earth as a man. Yeah. And then, of course, he is the eagle. He has our wings that we are under shelter from. That's, just that's interesting. I mean, that that's that. To me, that makes better sense. I don't agree with it 100%, but to me, that makes better sense than the humanity, the tame animals, the wild animals, and the birds. So that that would... He's our defender. He's our source of um, a sustenance. A sustenance. He's our source okay, but, of protection. But it's, our, a but it's a calf, and so he's not giving milk. A calf is a baby. That's, that's still, it would have to be a cow, but this is the face of a calf. So that's a baby. A calf would be something under, well under a year. I'm a cow girl. Sorry, I know. <laughs> so, so the calf. Maybe that's symbolic. Uh, the, the him coming in the virgin birth, the baby. As well, the baby and growing into the man. The calf. The calf would be the, the sacrifice. That's what I was saying. Yeah, the man. calf is the sacrifice. He came as a man. He is mm -hmm. our own protector. He's, He's line, the sacrifice. The line of Jehuda. Oh, he was. Leadership. You would expect if he if it were representing him as a sacrifice, it to be a lamb. Right. So as the lamb, true. I would I would say that would be Yahushua. Mm -hmm. But but a calf would not be him. But a calf could represent sacrifice. I don't know. That is interesting. Yeah, because in Ezekiel, it changes it from cat because this it's is got a bear. Like, huh? It's got a bear. It says ox mm -hmm. too. A bear and an ox. Yeah. Where is that in Ezekiel? Ezekiel 110. So read, read exactly what it's saying over there, Val. And the, the likeness of the face is the face of a man, and each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side, and each of the four had an ox on the left side. And each of the four had a face of an eagle. Okay, so in Ezekiel, it has all four faces. Right. Here, it doesn't sound like they all they have all four faces. Right. Or do y'all see that? Sounds like sure they're it makes them sound like individual creatures. Yeah, it does. Four living creatures. So they almost sound like they're different, but they, it, I think they're both they're all they're both both varieties are seraphim. Right. So are, they're surrounding his throne there. Mm. A whirlwind coming out of the north. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Stuff a whirlwind. Oh, these guys are coming out of a whirlwind out of the north. The brightness was around it in the midst of the glowing like metal, and out of the midst of the fire, and out of the midst it came what looked like four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces, and each one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of calf's foot, and they sparkled like the appearance of polished bronze. These are different because our our seraphs have six wings. <laughs> well, it's down here in the because it's highlighted as if this is from the Old Testament. Wow! And that's how I got it was because it has Ezekiel one ten right there in our scriptures. Wow! So, so it's a reference. He, yeah, he's he, whatever it is is just she was showing him that there's a reference in Ezekiel. Which this is a prophet, and this is his point of view, and this could be somebody else's. Wow. But, well, and this is how they're seeing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to describe that. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if you're seeing it for the Could first be. time, it would be that would be a frightening sign. Yes. I mean, frightening to read it. Yeah. These have got to be big too, and scary and fiery, and they they they're yeah. Uh uh. Don't you get up there and go sleep, Chanel? I'm not. Oh wait a minute. Oh, the tapestry. <laughs> you better hurry. Teddy's gonna get it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do 
Yeah, I thought Ezekiel 1, 4 through 9. What does that one say? That's what I just read. 4 through 9? Or yeah. did you go to 10? I read it all the way through. Okay, you did it. That's okay. Cool. Talks about them coming out of the clouds from the north. I don't know. Yeah. They're travelers. Well, if they're sitting in a throne room, they must be pretty important. I mean, whatever they are. A, a storm would be bringing destruction, yes. for sure. So. Okay, 4 8. And the four living creatures, each having six wings, were covered with eyes around and within, and they do not cease day or night, saying, Set apart, set apart, set apart. Yahweh El Shaddai, who was and who is and who is the coming. So El Shaddai meaning the, the Elohim who is who suffices, he's sufficient, he's enough. And when the living creatures give esteem and respect and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and bow before him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahweh, to receive esteem and respect and power. For you have created all, and because of your desire, they are and were created. This is, is um, my notes here are saying basically what you said earlier, Dennis, that these are, th are 12 tribal heads and 12 apostles. Yeah. And they're th casting their, their crowns down, which is giving authority mm -hmm. over to him. I mean, it's basically saying here, this is to you. Valerie, you got something. Well, no, I was looking at Ezekiel. Did we read 10 to also? Mm hmm Okay. But I was... I know you. You're doing the same thing I'm do. I did. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, there's something I'm looking to see from. Like Shemot, uh, Shemot is uh, Exodus. Exodus. Oh. I, I wonder if, okay, the 24 emissaries. I mean, the 24 elders. Uh huh. The 12 emissaries of the Lamb. What would that be? Would that be the apostles? That those are the apostles. Because yeah. over in twenty one, it talks about uh, oh. our gates again. Oh. I wonder if there's like a connection between the elders and the gates, because it talks one about yes, the gates. Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. Wait, what? In the book of David in, in, in chapter five. It says it comes on to say, one of the elders said to me, "Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of the deeds overcame." Okay. Okay. Back to your, your question. Uh, that the the tribes are the gates. Yeah. Right. Well, in twenty one, it talks about the tribes, and it talks about the twelve emissaries, which will be twenty four, which maybe could have some kind of something about the the elders. Because it talks about well, wait, what the twelve emissaries are the twelve uh, apostles, well, right? And it's talking about the tribe. Uh huh. It talks about the the gates. The names written on them are the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Okay. The the foundation is a, is built on the twelve apostles. Right. It's built on the twelve emissaries, but the gates are the twelve tribes. Tribes. So I'm 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 going to lead, lead to believe that these are the tribal leaders. The, uh, the, the sons, so the sons of the elders. It's, yeah. it's the sons of Yaakov, is who it would yeah. be. And it's somewhere it called for 24 of them, two from each tribe. Well, it, no, it's it's calling for the 12, the 12 brother, the 12 sons of Yaakov and the 12 emissaries, yeah. which will be the 12 apostles. So that that's the 24 right there. Because the foundation of the new city is built on the 12 apostles. And the gates to the to the tribes. city are the tribes. Because you got so, Israel and you have Yeshua, the witness. So, for every tribe, I mean, I'm sure there. Oh, there there could be, uh, but but what's interesting is that the entry to the city is through the tribes, and the city itself is built on the very foundation of the, the Messiah. In the Torah, you got it both. You have both. And, and here's an interesting take on the the preachers. It says that on the first piece was like a lion. It is supposed that there is a reference here to the four standards or signs of the four divisions of the tribe to the Israelite camp, as they are described by Jewish writers. The first living creature was like a lion. This was said to the rabbis, the standard of Judah on the east, with the two tribes of Issachar and Zebulon. The second, like a calf or an ox, which was the emblem of Ephraim, who pitched on the west, and the two tribes of Manasseh and Benjamin. The third was the face of a man, which, according to the rabbis, was the standard of Reuben, 
who pitched on the south and to the two tribes of Simeon and Gad. Okay, so that's the four. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, so what we've got surrounding Yah is the four divisions of the tribes. Like the, like yes, the, the camp. Just like the camp, mm -hmm. just like the buyer that they carried <laughs> through the, uh, the wilderness. So in Yasher, this is the, the way they set up camp with the, the flags. It was their tribal flags, and it was the head of those. So that's what it is. Right? That uh -huh. is it. Uh -huh. Where did that come from? Um, I just Googled what the uh, preacher in Revelation 4-7 meant, and it come up, Clark's Revelation 4-7 Bible Commentary, and that's what it says. And I just thought it was an interesting take. Because it goes on to say that Christian tradition has given these creatures as emblems of the four evangelists. So John is attributed the eagle, Luke the ox, and Mark the lion, and to Matthew the man. Wait, wait, wait. We don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to go there. The twelve tribes. Yeah, we don't want to go there. We want to go. I like the tribe thing. That well, the tribe, better. the tribe thing goes completely along with the encampment, mm -hmm. and it goes completely along with the bar that they the the burial the uh, bed of Yaakov, the way they carried him through the wilderness is exactly the same setup. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. See, these are the flags of the leaders of each uh, group in camping about. Yeah, that makes sense because there is a flag for each group. Yep. Hey, and see, it says, this traditional awesome. description agrees with the four faces of the cherub in Ezekiel's vision, too. No, no, it doesn't. Because Ezekiel's vision had the ox in it. It had an ox in it, uh, and they all had four faces. So it doesn't align with that. Yeah, look at it. Well, and then the flags for the army. And, and the flags, we pulled up the flags a long yeah. time ago and wrote them all down, and I have them written down somewhere in my Bible. <laughs> Wait, that's scary to, to think about. So, so let me see if I have it over here in, in the... But Yehuda is definitely the line. But I was thinking Reuben, what, what does it say Reuben is? Mm -hmm. It says that um, Reuben, who pitched on the south, on um, the third, was the face of the man. Okay, Reuben's a man. And that had the two tribes of Simeon and Gad. Yeah, okay. And who, the who, fourth was a, like a flying eagle who was, according to the same writers, the emblem and ensign of Dan who pitched on the north with the two tribes of Asher and Naphtali. I thought Dan was a snake. The, the the flag of Dan was a serpent, wasn't it? I don't remember. The flag of which one? Dan? <coughs> Dan. Dan. What does it say? It says the emblem or a sign of Dan. What's for Dan? What is he? It's a serpent. So Dan's flag is a serpent. So that knocks that out of the water. Okay, and and so, the, but what was, okay, we have what's on the, I feel like. Um, Judah was the lion with the tribes of Ishkar and Zebulon, and then the ox was with the emblem of Ephraim and Manasseh and Benjamin. The ox is not Ephraim's symbol either. What is, what is Ephraim's symbol, um, Chanel? Joseph, Judah, Levi, Naphtali, Reuben, Simeon, and Joseph is in there. Joseph, uh, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph is in there. Not for your what? crime and ministry. Yeah, and the tribe of Benjamin was a wolf. Yeah, Benjamin was a wolf. What's Joseph? It looks like a tree. Oh. I can't see. Hold on. Let me go back to this one. You know what? He could have been a tree. He, because Joseph, is, Joseph was like a tree, a vine overrunning the gate. Like, the wheat. Like wheat. Yeah, yeah like wheat the wheat shoots. shoots. Doesn't say bamboo shoots. The wheat, wheat. Yeah. Like when they, um, Which is yeah. what he stowed up for the family. The wheat exactly. stalks. That's what it is. The wheat okay. Stalks. So okay. that still makes a whole lot more sense, but it doesn't jive with their flags. But it could then be broken them down into the north, south, east, and the west. Wait, that's and the home. The home. The wait, hold on, Jason. That's the flags for the individual groups. What but, we're looking but, for is the ones for the no, because it was the head of that group. Is whose flag was flying? So, Ju each yes, group? it was uh, Judah's flag flew over the Four. east. Reuben's Four. flag flew flew over the south. Ephraim's flag flew over the west. And the northern flag was Dan. 
So, no. They didn't have their individual, but it was at the leaders. Okay, well, so we're still going to do some studying. Yeah. Guys, y'all, everybody did good, though, because that sounded really great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really they did. Tell that was our first click, so imagine if we just, everybody, take mm -hmm. some and go dig a little deeper. See what and we're going to do it, okay? Okay. We are now in <laughs> Chapter 5. See? We're going to make it through through 5, Okay. What time is it? Yeah. Oh, my. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, having been sealed with seven seals. It's the scroll of the Lamb. Val, read uh, Dan 7 10. Daniel. Chanel, Daniel. <laughs> Chanel, Daniel 12 9 through 13. Or is that 1 through 13? Jesse, Luke, no, Revelation 10, 1. <coughs> 12, 9 through 13, you said? 12, uh, 1. <coughs> I'm, I'm trying to see here. It's like I've written over it. Daniel. Go ahead, 1 through 13. Now at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great head who is standing over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of distress such as never was since there was a nation until that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in a book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up, some to everlasting life and some to reproaches everlasting abhorrence. And those who have insight shall shine like the brightness of the expanse, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, will hide, type the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall diligently search, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, shall look at, and looked and saw two others standing, one on this bank of the river and the other on that bank. And one said to the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long until the end of those wonders? And I heard the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, and he held up his right hand and his left hand to the heavens. And swore by him who lives forever that it would be for an, an appointed time, appointed times and half, and half a time. And when they have ended this ended scattering the power of the set apart people, then all these shall be completed. And I heard, but I did not understand. So I said, My master, what is the latter, of, the latter end of these matters? And he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are hidden and sealed till the time of the end. Uh, many shall be cleansed and made white and refined, but the wrong shall be wrong, and none of the wrong shall understand. But those who have insight shall understand, and from the time that which is, which is continual ta is taken away, and the abomination that lays waste is set up is 1,290 days. Blessed he is he who is waiting earnestly and comes to the end of 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, and rest and arise to your lot at the end of the days. Okay, so what, what you... What you just read, you've got, we've got two, three and a half years. It is, and that one says 1290, and I know the reason for that, but for the life of me, I can't think of it right now. But there's 42 months, 1260 days, and a time, times, which is two, and a half. So a time is considered one year, times, plural, that's two, so that would be three, and then a half. So everything points to three and a half years yeah. it's three and a half years guys mm -hmm. we're past the first the very first seal has already happened okay so <clears throat> that very first seal and we're, we're going to look at that real quick before we leave today but we're waiting for the the second seal which is when peace is taken away from jerusalem so that first seal is um it's the white horse and we're going to i want you to read this but it's the white horse He's holding a bow, which is, it shows that there's, um, he's killing, he's using it in battle, and he's got a crown to overcome. This is Islam. And what did they do not long ago when they went about beheading people and, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, back. Do you want me to start at 10 or is that 10 or is that? Um, what does 10 say? Um, a stern of fire was flowing and coming forth from his presence. 
and a thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the judge was seated, and the books were opened. Okay, so this is this book. This book is one of the books that is going to be open. Did I give anyone else scripture? Okay. Jesse. And I saw another strong messenger coming down from the heaven, robed in a cloud, and a rainbow on his head, and his face was like the sun, and his feet like columns of fire. Okay, one more verification to the rainbow and the shining face. Teddy, what? Okay, and I saw a strong messenger proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loosen its seals? He's wanting to know who's going to open the scroll. How many seals are on the scroll? Seven, right? And no one in the heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Under the earth. What does that mean? <laughs> under the flat plane of the earth. Yeah. Boy, Sheol. She, it, it, it would be Sheol. It would be the grave. And I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. So, can you imagine John? Can you imagine the emotions he's going through? I mean, seriously, look what he's seeing. He's seeing four creatures that have huge wings, weird faces. He's seeing 24. Think about it. Put yourself in, in his place. He's seeing all of this. Okay, <clears throat> verse 5. And one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of David, overcame to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals. And I looked and I saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders a lamb standing as having been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent out into all the earth. Uh, Second Ezra is fifteen five. Is anybody in Second Ezra right now? Yeah. Oh, good. So Second Ezra, and go to chapter fifteen, verse five. Uh, Behold, says Yahuwah, I will bring plagues upon the world: the sword, famine, death, and destruction. What it keep going? Yeah. Okay. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, says Yahuwah, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, says Yahuwah, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Mm. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Mitzrayim, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Mitzrayim with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Where are we? Mitzrayim. We're in Egypt right now, aren't we? Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Anybody want to add verses? Anything else? No? Okay, in seven, and he came and took the scroll out of the hand of him sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the set apart ones. And they sang a renewed song. This is a song that's been written before, guys, because it says it is renewed. And it's about redemption saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and have redeemed us to Elohim by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Guys, these bowls that were filled with incense, which were the prayers of the set-apart ones. Valerie, what does Proverbs 28, 9 say about the prayers Prayer, of the righteous? That he doesn't hear them. The unrighteous, he doesn't hear the prayers of them. Okay, so if okay. you turn your ear against yeah. hearing the Torah, he doesn't even hear your prayers. Guys, if, you, if, if you're if you one of those going, I don't want to hear those laws. I'm not under those laws. Guess what? 28.9 says, he who turns his ear from hearing the Torah, 
even his prayer is an abomination. Yeah. And then Deuteronomy 6.25 is one that Dennis usually quotes off the top of his head. Righteousness for us when we brought to do all the command before Yahweh our Elohim and he has commanded us. So the prayers of the set apart ones are the prayers of the righteous who are guarding to do all of his commands that he has set apart for us. And that, it, that would be the Torah. So it's the obedient ones. They're the ones whose prayers are in this bowl. It's not the when, when, that, when that was written, the word of God was the Torah. Yes. When, when, when were you reading? Well, in, in Proverbs, yes. in, in Psalms, and when, when those books were written, yes. what was already written was the Torah. It was only the, was the, it was the Tanakh. The Tanakh is all that was written at the time of John's writing. It was 150 years later when, speaking, even when Psalms were written, the word of Yah was already there, the Torah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You're talking about Psalms and Proverbs? Yes. Yes. Okay. Slow. Slow. Yeah. Well, and I think it's the putting it together and making it available to everyone, because I don't think that was available for everyone to study. I think a lot of the, the prophets' writings all came together around the same time, but that is an interesting way to look at it, and something worth checking into is, to when did they come out? Well, it was probably told everywhere, the stories, the, the how we were. Because this would be King David. That's what I'm saying. Uh, or Solomon. They that, had, that had written for us. Or they had all the Yeah, they did. Well, they had to write it. They yeah. sure did. Okay, so that, that is an interesting perspective that I've never even thought about. What? In Psalms, when uh, King David had already had the Torah, but without the the prophets, he didn't have the books of the prophets, probably. That's what interesting. What make him grieve so much for all the things he did? Like, he knew I mean, what he was if doing. you go to Psalms 119, 142, it says, your righteousness is righteousness forever, forever. and your Torah, which is the first five books, uh -huh. it, is true. Mm -hmm. And you go to Psalms 119, 160, it says the sum of your word is true. Yes. So, uh, the sum of his word would knew. be the first five. Yes. I mean, yes. Been, but they knew it. <coughs> they knew it. They knew it. Okay, so we're talking about the, the set apart ones, the righteous ones. Their prayers are the ones that are being heard. And that's basically what um, King David was saying is, your Torah is righteousness. Okay. So you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were saying, and we've already read that part in verse uh, 10, and made us sovereigns and priests. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read that over. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and have redeemed us to Elohim by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people of the nation. So we are being redeemed. Listen, when we when he pulls us from all four corners of the earth, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, it's not going to matter. If you're walking in the way of Yah, you're going home. It's time. You've been called. You woke up. You're, and listen, when we say woke, we're not talking about the wokeness that they have today. I still don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea what they're talking about. But you're part of the woke crowd that is going to be saved. These woke crowd today, that they are, I don't know what they are going to be done, doing. Mm. Okay. Um, Revelations 1.6. I, I just want to show you something because I don't think I'd ever really thought about it. In Revelation 1.6, it says, And has made us sovereigns. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, in verse 6, and has made us sovereigns and priests, to his Elohim and Father, to him be esteem and rule forever and ever. Amen. That is talking about Yahushua, but is making us kings and priests. Talks about that already. Romans 8, 17. Is that it? Right. It says that we'll be kings and priests. Okay, pull up Romans 8, 17. What? It says we're co-heirs. No, that's not it. It says it's 1 Peter 2 5. No, that's no, that's not it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, 1 Peter 2 5 says, 
I'm going to draw, start forward drawing near to him a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by Elohim and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a set-apart priesthood, to offer up spiritual slaughter offerings acceptable to Elohim through Yahushua Messiah. So there it's saying that we are a, a built-up priesthood. And pull, pull up your verse in Romans. Um, I'll start with 16 just to get the sentence. Four, five minutes. Romans 8, 16. Oh, we got it. I knew. Yes. <laughs> We've only got three more verses. Okay. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Elohim, and children also heirs, truly heirs of Elohim, and co heirs with Messiah. Indeed, we suffer with Him in order that we also be exalted together. Okay, and that was 16 through? Through 17. Okay, perfect. Okay. And I looked and I heard the voice of many messengers around the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was myriads and myriads. That's un uncountable. I mean, it's, you can't even count it. Uh, and, th and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb, having been slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and respect and esteem and blessings. Through his being slain, through that action, he has made himself worthy. Is what this is saying. And every creature which is in the heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, To him sitting on the throne and to the Lamb be the blessing and the respect and the esteem and the might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty four elders fell down, bowed before him who who lives forever and ever. And then I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. So, we're not going to read that because it's six. We're going to start next week, and next week, I promise, I will be rested and ready to roll. And thank you for my for, for being patient with me. Wow. You were great. I, I got it. Thank you. You were the one. Anytime. Shabbat shalom, guys. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. We love y'all. And, Dibs, would you pray us out? Please. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, Father, that we can just come together and worship you, Father, this day that's been set apart between, as a sign between you and your children, Father, and we look forward to being here next week, Father. Father, we just pray for our lives, friends, Father, we pray, we just pray for all your set apart children, Father, and, and, and for, for everyone else to have their eyes open, Father, that, that there's just a great awakening on the whole earth, Father, that just everybody turns to you, although we know that's not going to happen, probably. But Father, we just we just love you, and we just want to be your people, Father. So we thank you again for today. And Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Amen. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I don't think we've had anyone on line with us this afternoon. But um, we will bless everyone that's out there and who watches this video even later. And Shalom. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.